In this video, I'm going to talk about child flows within Microsoft Power Automate. Now, child flows are basically used to structure the flow for easy navigation and maintenance. Now, imagine a scenario whereby you have a flow, a single flow, which has a lot of actions in it. Now, it's a very good practice or an idea to uh, structure your flow in such a way that if you want to break down your flows into multiple subflows, then uh, that will help you uh, structure your code in a neat way, which will be easy in uh, editing and easy for troubleshooting purposes as well. Now, child flows are mainly used for task or action reusability. If you think within your flows, uh, there are some sections which you can reuse with other flows. Uh, it is a wise idea to create a separate independent flows out of it. Now, you can have multiple child flows inside a parent flow. Now, to simulate all this exercise, you need to have one parent flow and one child flow so that you can show that you have created a parent flow and then you are calling a child flow from a parent flow and the child flow runs independently as well. Now, there are a couple of things to make note of here. Parent flows, parent flows can have any type of trigger. Parent flow waits for the child flow to complete for the lifetime of the flows. Now, for a different scenario, it's like one year if the flow is using built-in connections and dataverse and 30 days for all other flows. Now, you cannot pass connections from parent flow to child flow. So both parent flow and child flow are independent in terms of connection interfaces. Child flows need to run under specific connections. Uh, they can't run uh, under... Uh, run only users so they need to have specific connections defined in order for them to execute which i'm going to demonstrate that in the video now child flows only support embedded connections now export import process of flow containing solution will link parent and child flow automatically now remember in order to do all this thing you need to have the flows within a solution you can't uh, have defined a flow which is not part of the solution so that's the prerequisite now if you see in the screenshot on the left hand side there is a parent flow on the right hand side there is a child flow so in parent flow you can write your own logic and then you can call a child flow using run a child flow okay and then uh, within the child flow when you execute the set of action you need to revert back to the parent by using uh, an action which will return back the values of the child flow execution. So that's respond to a power app for flow. And there is one more uh, action which you can use in the HTTP trigger. Now, uh, connections used, if you see here, now you can't use provided by run only users for specific uh, action. Uh, you need to use the actual connection value uh, uh, within the child flow. Now, uh, you may encounter an error if this value is not returned back, you know. So, so this you are, you are going to see in the parent flow. Uh, if you call a child flow and then the child flow does not have a specific action defined to uh, reverting back to the values uh, to the parent flow. Now, let's go into the demo. Now, here in the demo, I have created one solution, parent child flow. Let me create a first a child flow so let me create an instant flow okay let's call this as uh, a child flow child flow say one okay and our manual trigger and this child flow does nothing fancy you know just for the demonstration purpose we are going to uh, just send out an email okay so send email which is an Office 365 Outlook action. And I'll just send a hard-coded email, okay? So let me send this, okay? So this is simple child flow, okay? Now, let's leave this child flow here for a moment, okay? And uh, let me duplicate this and then go back, okay? And now let's create a parent flow. Okay, so let me first save this value. Yeah, so new automation cloud flow instant. And 
let me create a parent flow one now i'm doing step by step i'm not doing everything at once just to show you the error okay uh, what happens when you create a parent and a child flow now this is a parent flow which is going to call the child flow so uh, let's assume your parent flow has some action you know like say compose action which basically uh, adds an array you know uh, yeah. and then it has some other uh, action called as initialize variable okay which will initialize a boolean variable uh, that status you know uh, and then you have a value of the true okay and you save this value now this is your parent flow now we haven't yet not called the child flow okay so let me save this so this is the parent flow and let me go into the child flow as well here so this is the child flow this is the parent flow so let me edit this okay so this is the child flow this is the parent flow now let's do one thing now we haven't done any specific connection let's start calling the child flow and see what happens okay now before calling the child flow if we run this flow the parent flow let's see running this parent flow This parent flow runs fine okay it doesn't do anything fancy it just initializes a variable and there is one compose action okay uh, go back parent flow one and edit it so let me edit the parent flow now now here now what we are going to do we are going to call the child flow okay so an action is run child flow so run child flow if you see a run child flow under flow so if you see the flows connector then you have an action called as a run a child flow now here whatever child flow you have within a specific environment will be listed now i can see there is one child flow one okay so let me call this one child flow one which is basically this one child flow one okay now fine click over here and save it let's see what happens whether you're able to run or not now it says request to xrm api failed and it says update the child flow for action to end with the response action so it says that your child flow should have a response action okay and update the child flow for action run a child flow to not use run only user connection now these are the two error which we need to resolve okay so what we are going to do we are going to go here and this is the child flow i'll click on new step and i'll say respond okay so respond to a so it's a power apps connection it's a respond to a power app or flow okay so you just need to keep this value and if you want to pass anything from this uh, child flow to the parent flow that's fine if you don't that's also fine so you just save this value okay now if you come here and again you click on save okay now one of the error disappears right so one of the error is gone because we have added the response action now this one it says update the child flow for action run a child flow not use run only user connection for this what you need to do you need to just go one step back okay and uh, if you open this and this this flows uh, interface then here under run only user okay uh, if i click on edit okay you can you need to select for the connections which you have used now the connection which we have used is office 365 outlook to send an email we just say use this connection use a specific connection okay now it says user with run only access will not control or have access to this connection outside of this flow and i'm okay with this okay so i went here clicked on edit and uh, i said use this connection okay and i click on save okay and now this flow is on from a specific connection runs on a specific connection now 
let me come to the parent flow again and now click on save and now the error has disappeared now our parent flow is ready to run okay now let's do one thing uh, let's save this first and now run this okay so what will happen when you run this from control from parent flow will execute one by one and then it will call the child flow and then the child flow will start executing okay and then return back the value so if i test this click on test manual and when i run this flow then you might see the flow execution it says your flow ran successfully so this has run this has run this has run this has run and now if you see child flow one whether this has been triggered or not with the parent flow and you should see that yes it has been triggered okay now if you see the execution it will uh, show you that the triggering process happened okay and there was nothing passed okay email was sent and you have responded back to the flow okay so you have sent the control back to the parent flow now from an email perspective i think we should uh, be able to see the email as well uh, and yes this is the email which was sent by the uh, child flow okay so that's it folks this is all about executing parent flow and child flow so it is always a best practice that if your flow uh, has grown very big uh, then it will be difficult to manage so why don't you break those flows into different subsections which is a reusable component now parent flow will call that reusable component the reusable component are nothing but a child flow so this particular child flow now the child there can be multiple child flow and your parent flow can call multiple child flow so you can break down your flow into different different subsections like a method or a function in any programming language and then uh, the parent flow would be able to call those child flow couple of things to make note of that whenever you create a child flow you need to respond back to the flow okay now this is an important step because if you don't put this then it will air out and the other thing which we mentioned that any connection which you use uh, within your uh, child flow uh, should not have run only user execution so if i've used office 365 outlook i need to use a specific connection only okay now if you use multiple other connections it will be listed over here and then you need to use a specific connection and you cannot use run only user connections and thereby you can trigger the child flow from a parent flow so that's it folks this is all about parent flow child flow connection thanks for watching